Hey, Hi. welcome everybody. The fun stuff, paying the bill, right? My Thinking favorite. about loans, woohoo! <laughs> um, yeah, hey, look, it's been, in terms of our cadence, it's been a little while for those of you that tune in frequently, but like we usually do, tell us where are you in the country? Um, you know what? Tell us where your kids going to school. That'd be a fun one to hear. Where's your where, where, Where's your kids going to school? And then we always like to know if you're a newbie with us. I'm throwing a lot of questions at you, I guess. Right? Should have yeah. done a a poll. But are you a new new newbie? Are you a regular? See uh, the Horn Frogs, Wesleyan University, awesome Scran, UBM, Denver Temple, Berkeley, all over, awesome. Awesome. Wow, we got a lot of different ones. I saw the J JMU Dukes, Peggy. Go Dukes. Go Dukes. Scad, we get a we get some Oberlin. Uh, talented see. art folks. I Hoosiers. saw the Hoosiers. Love it. I definitely have my little favorites, don't I? 100 percent Yeah. I mean, because look, it it's it's uh I don't think anybody looks forward to this part of the process, right? Oh my god, I'm gonna get a check for thirty thousand dollars for just the fall semester and no matter of weeks here, whatever it is, but take a second to, to feel good about the fact that your kids are going off to college, right? You made it this far. You got to this point. I mean, look at all these unbelievable schools, George Mason honors, um, you know, so uh, it's a big deal, right? It's a, it's a, it's a major, major, you know, 18 year collective. It is. It is. So you should pat yourself on the back. You got to, you got to celebrate along along the road, you know? Yeah, we could all probably use more of that, at least speaking for myself. But um, but yeah, it's, it, it's a big deal. So it's, a, you know, we don't want, we don't want to lose sight of that. Um, and I think, you know, for tonight, there's a decent amount of material we have to cover. Like always, we'll, we want you asking questions throughout. We won't get to all the questions despite best efforts, right? So we'll talk about how we can help you uh, beyond tonight if we don't get to your particular question i mean we're just like the appeal process this is an important decision right we oftentimes use a statistic that you know one percentage point in your loan on average can translate to thirty thousand dollars right uh in terms of the the swing one way or the other now obviously that's an average um but there's 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 data to support that so it's an important decision. Um, you know, we feel like it's a great value in talking to us one-on-one -on -one so we can help your family make sure that you're making this uh, the right decision because unfortunately, and we'll say this more than once tonight, there's no universal recommendation, right? There, There is no, everybody should take this loan. Um, we'll have a dozens of conversations like this every day this time of year, uh, collectively as a team we'll be making dozens of different recommendations, right? Based on the family. So our goal tonight is to at least A, educate you with all your options and help you understand the pros and cons of each and at least start to get cooking on, okay, what which which option is the best for our family, right? Um, so just quickly by way of introduction, I saw we did have some new folks on here, which is always fun for us. Um, yeah, my name's Matt. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. My name's Matt Carpenter. Um, I'm a founder of College Aid Pro, been doing this forever. Um, and th this is a less sexy part of the process, but like I said, a really important one because th th this decision matters. And I, a rewarding part about it for us is I think anybody that we get in front of, at least you have the peace of mind to say, you know what, we weren't one of these families that just threw darts. We just chose the plus loan because that's what the financial aid office said. We just chose Sally Mae because they hammered us with emails and they just showed up on our inbox every single day, right? We're going to help you make the right decision for your family. I'm not saying it's painless. It's not fun to borrow money or pay a big bill, but you can feel really good going, hey, you know what? We understood our options. We did the run that the, uh, we went with the one that was right for us. So so there's a lot to be said for that. Um, this is my partner in crime, Peg Keo, the, the uh, fairy godmother of financial aid. I'm just north of Boston. Peggy's just outside of Seattle, but Peggy, if you want to say hi, and then we'll uh, we'll get cooking. Yeah, so welcome to you newbies, and uh, hopefully didn't have withdrawal our groupies because we haven't we haven't shown up in a few weeks. Um, yeah, but I'm Peg Keo. Have a big background in finance. Had my own business, but actually, my best credential is that I have twins, and I've been through this. So 
this, as Matt said, this piece of the puzzle is important. So don't get senioritis at this point and start checking out, right? As parents, you know, you really want to do this last piece. And there's already a question in there about five two nines that I'm about to talk about in a few minutes. So it's how to pay the bill and loans are part of it and just all the all the pieces. So you're you're close to the finish line, but this this one you want to give uh, definitely want to give the attention that that it deserves. So um, as most people know, please ask your questions. We will do our best to answer. Put them in the Q and A as opposed to the chat, unless we ask you to put something in the chat, um, because that's one place for us to look. Also, if you want to be anonymous, you can, and we will send out a recording. That's like the the most favorite question that people ask. So if you get, if we're going to cover a lot tonight, like Matt said, so you will get a recording and you, you can, you can listen to it over and over again, if your heart desires. So don't worry. Don't worry if you can't take it all in, in the next, you know, 45, 50 minutes, cause it's all good. You'll get, you'll get the recording. So, um, for you new people, we are College Aid Pro, and this truly is our mission, is to end the student debt crisis, which is a big deal, um, by empowering you to shop smarter for college. So we've been on this journey with you with the class of 2024, and you're getting to the end, and, and this, is, this is just another piece to, to understand and, and do what's ever right for your family, which is going to, which really will differ from family to family. So there we are, the happy couple. Better picture of Matt than me in that one, I got to say. I don't know. You don't sell yourself. Anyways. Okay. So everybody should have gotten an email. I know a lot of you groupies, been there, done that. We strongly encourage if you have not and you are new to us to set up your mycap.collegeapro.com account. We actually have some really good loan information in the software that we're going to show you. Ways to look for private student loans. Um and then we also have a one year view so you can add your actual official numbers and play around in there and you know should i use more 529 it's you can use it for the planning part of this piece and then if you have younger kids you're going to want to be in there to start that whole journey as well so i'm sure matt put this link in the chat but if you haven't done it most of you have so that's great definitely go in there and uh get that set up. You're, you just click get started for free and you'll be off to the races. Really, really easy to get set up. And Peg, let okay. me just say, that, uh, sorry to um, interrupt so early here, but another, you know, firm recommendation for why you should set up that free account, because we're going to spend a couple of minutes talking before we get to the borrowing part, we're going to talk about how can we reduce ways to borrow. It's not too late to appeal or negotiate for more money with these colleges. And the first place that you want to start is to make sure, did you get a good deal? Our software will tell you that. Okay. So if you haven't done that already, and again, I know most of you have, it might not be too late to go back to the school to ask for more money. Uh, we're still doing it at this stage of the game. As a matter of fact, just had another uh, uh, $15,000 award. What was the school? Very, very good school that just came across right before we jumped on here. I'll think of it, but uh, Vassar. But um Anyways, that's that's another reason that you want to get on the platform to say, well, wait a second, before I pay this bill, let me just make sure I get the best deal possible. Yeah, because this year, the timeline, you know, we're on a timeline slide, but the timeline with appealing is completely, yeah, completely thrown out of whack. So you can definitely be still thinking about appealing, even if you even if you have said yes, as, as Matt said, I've, we've told families that have said, yes, we're coming. And they've still appealed for various reasons and been successful. So, um, yeah, that that's a huge part of what you can use the software for. So the timeline here, you are going to get really good at understanding your child's school, all these great schools that we saw in there, when the bill is due and how it, it works. Every school is slightly different. Once you get through the fall semester, you'll get, well, and, and if it's quarters, like out here where I am, a lot of the Washington State schools are quarters, so different timeline. You'll be paying three different times for three quarters, unless you're paying for summer quarter two. A lot of schools are semesters, so it's twice a year. Um, the fall bills for this fall could be coming out next month. They could be due as early as August 1st at certain schools. So we're not way ahead of the game here. Um, 
then for the spring bills, it'll come, you know, around the holiday time, most likely. So you'll, like I said, you'll get used to it. Um, you're so that's why we're talking about this. Start thinking about we're going to talk to you about all the different types of loans, and you want to start getting in the weeds and filling out applications for these. Usually, you're going to hear back pretty quickly. They want to get an answer back to you. They want you to borrow from them, right? So they're they're incentivized to move quickly as well. So probably a good idea to know what you're doing by mid July. You don't want to you don't want to be applying to loans when the when the bills almost due, right? that just creates more stress. Then there's also payment plans. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. That's super helpful for many, many families because if it's semesters, it's hard to come up with that big chunk, whatever you're going to um, bring to the table. And almost every school has those. Again, they're different at every school. When they start, how many they'll do over a semester. So if you those financial aid award letters most likely had at least intro information about payment plans because they like to share it there because they know that'll help families make a decision to come to them. Um, this is also a time in the journey where you want to start thinking about how you're spending your money, right? Um, maybe there's some money that you are spending needlessly. You're wasting money. I mean, that's so common for all of us, right? That there's just things we're not paying attention to. And as this slide says, if $100 a month, it would really add up over four years. If that's money that you don't have to borrow, that you can allocate for college, you know? So that's what we say, like kind of hit that reset button, you know, maximize all. And, and I love this stuff, being a financial planner, right? Kind of go through your junk drawer and think about where you can get some pennies and dollars and it'll add up quicker than you think to allocate that toward college. Also, there could be money you're spending for your child that's going off to college that you're really used to spending that now can easily be allocated. What you don't want to do is have that all of a sudden be spent on something else. You're used to spending it on that child that's going to college. If you need it, you want to try and grab that money if it's sports or music or whatever it happens to be um, and allocate that toward college because every little bit is going to help. Okay. So um, as I mentioned, they're usually, they could be monthly, they could be three times a semester. These schools will have payment plans. They use third-party institutions and typically there's an enrollment fee. Um, it's a one-time fee, and then it, you're not charged interest, typically. The colleges are not trying to make more money at this point. They're trying to make it easy for you to pay. They want you to be able to pay and for your child to come and stay enrolled. So they'll do the upfront setup fee, whatever they want to call it. Then they're going to divide it. It's not like your car insurance where you end up paying 10% more because you didn't pay it all up front, Okay. And you don't, if there's a certain amount you owe, it's your choice what you want to put in the payment plan. So realize that, you know, always ask for what you want, what you need, right? I do that all the time across the board. And it's amazing what you can get. And I'm, you know, I'm usually very kind about it. And people will give you stuff that is shocking. So definitely keep that in mind. So we did have a question about resources and how do you use your 529? And if people don't know what a 529 is, that's all good. It's just a it's just a special college savings plan that the IRS created. Same thing with the ESA and the prepaid tuitions. Those all fall under the college savings plan umbrella of the IRS. So you might have what's called an UGMA or an UTMA. If you don't, don't worry about it. It's a custodial account. It's an it's a asset of your child. So when you did the forms, you put it under your child. You will have to liquidate that. So if you have that and you want to talk strategy, it is important to talk to us one on one because I could talk for 10 minutes about all the different nuances of this. And it really depends on your family when you should be using it and if you should be using it right now. If we have any younger parents on here, real go getters who have like a rising sophomore, you should definitely be talking to us because there's some strategies early in the game that you can you can implement before it's gonna end up being on financial aid forms. 
More commonly, people have 529s, Coverdales, and these prepaid tuition plans. So people ask all the time, should I just use my 529 up right away? Not necessarily. We, we're going to talk, Matt's going to talk about federal direct student loans in a few minutes. We recommend that most people take those. You really need to look at this over a four-year time span, not just say, oh, here's all of our buckets. Let's just use them all up and then have a big gulp junior year and say, we don't have any money left. Now we have to take out this loan and this loan and this loan. That You want to plan better than that. So just keep that in mind, okay? You also want to take into account if you have outside family members or friends that want to help. This should all be fit into your four-year plan, all these different buckets. So really, really look at this now in a four-year chassis. If that's kind of blowing your mind because you're not a numbers person, again, we are more than happy to help you with that, give you a nice PDF of it, and at least you'll have a guide to follow. And people might want to help you, and they might want to see what that looks like. So it can be, it can be super helpful to bring all those resources together. So a 529, basically you need to use it if you have one um, for qualified higher education expenses. So that's anything you're paying the college, tuition and fees, room and board, books, um, anything the college requires. If the college says you must have this computer and we preload software, that's all good. You can pull all that. If you don't use it on qualified higher education expenses, you will just pay tax on the earnings that you pull out and a 10% penalty. So that's that's the negative of a 529. You've got to use it for the qualified higher education expenses. How do you take the money out? You reach out to whoever is administering it. So it could be Vanguard, for example, in, in a given state, Fidelity, whoever, and you ask for the money. You need to keep track of Am I taking more than I should be? You need to have that paper trail because if you do get audited in one of those years that you have a child in college, you're going to have to prove that you spent that money on qualified higher education expenses. Vanguard or Fidelity or T. Rowe Price, if you ask for 100000 bucks, they're just going to send it to you. No questions asked. Or they're going to send it to the college. Whatever you request. So, But paper trail, paper trail of taxes is important across the board in case you get audited. So that's how it works. You will get a 1099Q from your 529 company. And then the college will also, they'll also have a form that you can get that shows what you paid them. Okay. I'm not going to get into upperclassmen years, but it gets a little dicier about using a 529, but just we can help you with that down the road. I don't want to, I don't want to get into too much detail and tell you stuff you don't need to know right now. So that's really for freshman year, most kids are living in the dorm. It's pretty straightforward what you're paying the college. It's most of it's on the bill, except for books. Okay. Hey, guys, um, I believe you you spoke through this, but I was I was busy answering questions. Um, but we got a, a ton of uh, this question, right? So I think it bears worth repeating. And I think, I, I guess we'll find out in a second here, we have slightly different I don't know, opinions around this, but the question is, look, I got a 529, but it can't cover all four years. Okay. Maybe I can, I got one and a half years, two and a half years. Does it make sense to exhaust it up front or do I try to spread it over four years and supplement with loans, et cetera, each year? How, how do you answer? And I know there's, you know, not a universal correct way to do this, but how do you generally answer that question? I generally, the first thing is if you don't have enough for four years, then you should look at the direct student loans and you should put those in if that, if you're going to need loans and it's not going to be grandma and grandpa, then you should put those each year in your four-year plan and see what the Delta is. If that's your main source of funding, then sure, you can start using it. Sometimes people have other buckets and so then it gets a little bit more complicated because it is an asset of the parents on the form. So as you spend it down the next year, that's that's assets that you're not putting down. And that's what you saved it for. You know, um, if kids are definitely going to med school or grad school, then, you know, it can get a little bit more complicated. I was making the point when I was talking is you don't say, well, who wants loans? We're not taking those. We've got enough to pay for freshman and sophomore year. And then it's all gone. 
you can't go back and get those the best loans out there. So that was the point I was trying to make. I, I still don't want to give advice to all the hundreds of people that are on tonight because you could have some nuances, but yeah, you, you've got the 529. You should use it for what you saved it for, for all these years. Got it. Thank you. Is that Thank close to what you would say, Matt? Yeah, really close. I mean, I'm always, you know me, I'm always going to recommend everybody they take the federal direct student loan. And then generally speaking, I'm going to say exhaust that 529 up front and borrow on the back end. There's going to be exceptions to that too, right? The peg's point, we can't say everybody should do it that way. But generally speaking, I'm going to say take the federal direct student loan, use the 529, and then delay when we have to borrow as long as we can, because we know when we have to do borrow, the meter is going to start running on the interest, right? So there will be exceptions, but generally speaking, that's how I coach it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so grandparent assets or, or out, any outside resources, right? If you're lucky enough to have people that want to help, that's great. With the new FAFSA law, it got much easier at the FAFSA only schools. It used to be punitive when an outside entity helped. Now you don't have to time it and use the funds strategically time-wise. You still might want to use them strategically, again, if grad school's in the mix or whatever. This this comes in with 529s, you know. That's where things get a little different if you have this, but you know, that four-year cash flow is huge for people that want to help because they might want to see the delta every year. And it's like, oh, we'll come in and help with that. Now, CSS profile schools, they will ask if outside people, if you're anticipating help in a given school year, that's where you got to be really careful because that could dollar for dollar, you could get less in endowment money if you know for sure somebody's helping you. So these are some of the nuances. Depends on the school and how they look at it. But the lion's share of schools, it's not going to hurt you. So that was a huge, awesome change. Um, on the tax side, there is a tax credit. It's called the American Opportunity Tax Credit, AOTC for short. Basically, what a tax credit is, you do your taxes, you owe 20000 to the government, you get this tax credit you, you owe 17.5 to the government. That's, it comes right off your liability. Um, you see right here, just like a lot of tax credits, there's a phase out, that's for married filing jointly. I think it's 80 to 90 for head of household or single filing. Um, the key thing about this that people get caught up, especially the first tax year is, you have to spend at least $4,000 on tuition and books, not room and board, it's IRS rule. Um, you can't pull that out of a 529 because you already got tax benefits from a 529. You can't double dip and get American Opportunity Tax Credit on the same dollars. So a lot of people get stung the first year. And remember, this is all tax year. So your kids are going to go this fall. You're in the 2024 tax year. Second semester freshman year in college, you're in the next tax year. So it doesn't follow school year. So you can really maximize this and potentially get it for five five different years. You have to claim your child and it's per student. So if you have twins like I did, if you're eligible, that's 5,000 in credits. If you're fully eligible, you make 150,000 bucks, for example. So this, this doesn't have anything to do with the college, but it's just a tax benefit and if you're disciplined enough to scroll that savings aside, you can use it for college. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to you now, Matt. Yeah, I just got a question. So I was typing um, that was around, can we convert a UTMA custodial account into a 529? I know there are instances in which this is possible. This is definitely one where you'd want to meet with one of the experts on our team. Yeah, we Again, we can't give the firm rec uh, financial advice here. And then I listed the names of all the our team members that are financial advisors and or CPAs that know that stuff, uh, you know, off the back of their hand. Right? Well, and you have to look at your family situation because you don't want to lose need-based aid because you're liquidating a custodial account. So that's why I said, if we do have any sophomore rising sophomore parents here definitely book with us before january because that's when it starts matter that's when it's going to start to matter from a tax standpoint um yeah great point so a couple things here right you've heard us each say a variation of this no one size fits all unfortunately this could be a very quick presentation would make our jobs easier your lives easier everybody take out this loan right 
we're going to help you at least start to determine what is your family's borrowing criteria, right? That's the first question I always ask is what's your family's borrowing criteria? I have never heard someone answer that question and have it established off the top of their uh, tip of their tongue, right? It's one of these things like, I don't know, what is borrowing criteria, right? We're going to talk about that because that's what's going to dictate the best loan option for your family. And it might mean that it's a higher rate than you could get from somewhere else. And we'll talk about some of the reasons why. We also want to help you at least, you know, we know for your class 2024 families, which is the vast majority of you, we're at the finish line. It is what it is, right? Our resources are what they are. The school costs what it's going to cost. But we at least want you to have somewhere to anchor to you as you are probably starting to think about, well, geez, are, are we nuts here? How much is too much to borrow? Uh, and you can probably go to the next slide, Peggy, because we're going to start with that one. And this is a framework that we use. And again, this is baked into our software. This is baked into the platform, right? So for the, you guys that are already open to your accounts, you kind of see, okay, what is the average starting salary from Clemson? I saw Clemson come up a bunch that's in business, right? Uh, we'll tell you that versus how much you have to borrow. And does that math make sense? But high level, we don't want a student to borrow more than we expect them to make their first year after graduating. Okay, within their field of study. Now, again, our software is more specific. It'll say, well, you know, not all computer science majors are, are created equal. What does this school look like versus that school, right? But in other words, if I have somebody that's going to major in computer science, I am okay with them borrowing up to $76,000 over the course of four years, right? Of course, not, you know, each year. Um, of course, we that's not the goal. We want them to be less than that but the math still supports us being okay as students if we borrow up to 76,000. However, if we wanna go be an elementary school teacher, right? Obviously God bless, but it's just a different income threshold, right? It's just a different expected income and take home pay and just kind of ceiling in that field. So they, the math is not gonna support borrowing 76,000 if we wanna go be an elementary school teacher then our threshold's about 40,000. But that is how, and again, this is very data-driven here, but that is a, a basic place to anchor to if you guys are thinking about how much is too much for these kids to take on. Um, okay, Peggy, go ahead. Uh, so quickly here, right, I'll just rip through these because we're going to talk through each of these bullets. This is just kind of table of contents, types of loans. We'll hit the two federal loans, the one for parent, one for students. We'll hit the private student loan sector. We'll, 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 we'll double click into that one and spend some time. Uh, the state loan program, less talked about, but for some families will be your best place to borrow. Uh, less frequently, some of the colleges have their own loans. Those can be really competitive loans, great interest rates. They usually just cap the amounts you can borrow. And again, only a small percentage of colleges even offer that. And then lastly, uh, Peg's going to rip through some all, what we call alternative loan options, not your traditional educational loans, but where else can we borrow some money? So the starting point, right, you've heard us emphasize this. We will continue to emphasize it. Uh, even though rate, federal rates have increased this year, this part of our strategy and firm recommendation hasn't changed. Every single family that needs to borrow is, the, and this is one of the few universal recommendations, is going to do so through the is going to start through the federal direct student loan. So long as you completed a FAFSA, the student is entitled uh, to this program. Okay, uh, up to fifty five hundred dollars freshman year. It goes up a, a little bit for sophomore year. Caps out at seventy five hundred junior and senior year. If you need to borrow, don't think about it. We're starting here. Even if you don't need to borrow. So I had somebody write in to say, "Well, do we have to borrow? If we don't need to, of course you don't." I would still recommend you at least consider taking this $5,500 federal government student loan because even if you pay it off right away, there's no prepayment penalties, you can do that each year and it will still, um, uh, and, and your student will graduate with established credit. So if you need to borrow, start here. You don't need to borrow, still take advantage of this program, pay it off, okay, on behalf of your student, they graduate with established credit. So a pretty amazing perk. Said another way, you got to talk me why uh, talk me out of why it's not a good idea to take advantage of this program we're all entitled to. 
Okay. So I just kind of talked through those reasons. I won't disregard the fact that there is a little origination fee, about 1%. Um, the subsidized portion of the loan, if you were offered that, not everybody is, does not accrue interest while the kids are in college. The unsubsidized version does. Okay. There's a couple of steps that the kids need to complete online in order for this loan to actually go through, in order for the money to change hands between the federal government and the colleges. And that's what's called uh, entrance counseling and a promissory note. You see the link we put right in here. I think we have a couple more bullets on the next slide for it, Peggy. And then actually, Peggy, something that maybe we should share, at least in the follow-up, or, or maybe I'll go track it down um, once you take the mic again. But Peg actually did a really nice kind of like almost line by line instructions of like, here's how to complete these steps. So you guys don't have to overthink that. Uh, we can track down that link for you. So in terms of, you know, parents that are borrowing, right? If, if we take out a federal, uh, there is one program, federal program for parents that are borrowing and a couple of things that are that are really noteworthy here. Number one, the interest rate stinks this year. Between the interest rate and the origination fee, we're talking about effectively about a 10% interest rate, right? I think officially it's what, eight and a half percent peg and um, a 4% a, a origination fee. So really, really Yeah, high. actually the parent loan this year is 9.08 for 24-25. Yeah, and it's four and a quarter origination, which is massive. Ridiculous. Um, so, um, you know, just no way of sugarcoating it, an extremely high interest rate. Um, but there's a couple of things to talk to. I mean, a lot of, of people hear that and they go, "That's there's no way I'm taking out this loan, especially if I can get an interest rate that's maybe half of that, which there that is a, a real possibility. But there's some positive parts of this program, okay? Um, forgiveness programs exist okay so make sure you do your homework especially if you are um an employee in in uh, in the civil sector if you are a nurse if you are a teacher if you are a firefighter if you are a police officer right these are all um covered under forgiveness programs where you're again do your homework here you're going to have to certainly pay some of this it's not like it's all going to be forgiven certainly um but there are some robust forgiveness programs if you fit in that bucket. It's also the easiest loan to qualify for. So if you're a family that goes, oh my goodness, we have a really low credit score, we've got a low income, and we're, we are just desperate to get any loan approved, for you guys, this might be the only option, okay, is the PLUS loan. Um, the other really positive aspect about the PLUS loan is it's the most uh, flexible in terms of repayment options, in terms of unexpected life changes. We lose a job, you know, we, 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 we have a God forbid. Nobody is going to work with you. No lender is going to work with you in the same way that the federal government will. So although a lot of people just hear immediately these loans are out of control, which are the rates are out of control, which they are, not all of us are going to dismiss this as an option uh, just because of that. And the other thing that I should flag is that this loan is only in the parent's name, right? Unlike a lot of these other loans we're gonna talk about next, where the student is also formally attached to the note, this one is just in parent or parent's name. Um, and I will say we can't, uh, it, it, this is the, a unique kind of outlier situations here. And again, but it's but it's something that, um, you know, we can do when we meet with folks individually, but there are ways to be very, creative in terms of how you use this plus loan if you're a family that kind of fits in a certain category. So all that's to say that despite the high rate, we, we're still going to recommend this loan for a certain percentage of you that are listening right now. Um, go ahead, Peggy. I think I hit it and I probably hit most of the points on the next page here, only the parent's name. Yeah, the student can pay this loan back, but that's a handshake agreement between the student and his parent or parents or her parent or parents. Only the borrower, or which is the parent in this case, is attached to this loan. Another kind of nice part about it, just from a, uh, I don't know, admin standpoint, is that they tell you right away if you've been approved or denied from this PLUS loan. So you're not waiting on pins and needles uh, for a couple of days in some cases. If you want to make sure you can afford it, you can defer payment, but most people start paying second semester's freshman year. 
so that you don't have the compounding of interest. So you got to be, you want to be very careful with this. That's a good point, you right? Try, you can't, we, I did a, a thing with advisors this morning and somebody wrote in, can it be, can you change, change it to the parent, to the child? You cannot. It's always in that parent's name. So. 100%. Yep. For the life of the loan. Okay. So a couple state programs to talk about. Now, not every state in the country offers, uh, not every state, not all 50 states, as a matter of fact, the minority of them even offers a an, an option, right, for families in their state to borrow, okay? However, uh, there are now three states, which is great because it used to just be Rhode Island, but there are three states, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and Iowa, of all places, right, where you can use those states' programs to borrow, whether or not you're a resident of the state, whether or not you go to school in the state, right? So I can be, you know, a, a resident of Oregon. I can go to school in Colorado, and I can use Rhode Island state loan program. That's important to at least be aware of because some of these states have pretty competitive rates. All of them, all of them have lower rates than the direct plus loan, right? Um, but you're only... You, I, I have a feeling that most of you didn't know what I just shared there because these loan these lenders are only marketing to their states. They don't market across the country, right? So unless you're a resident of one of those states, and if you are, I'm sure you've heard of your state's program, uh, you don't know about this. But it's something that we just want to put on our radar as a potential option. Again, the rate's going to be better than the federal government. Why is it a no-brainer? Well, there are no forgiveness programs, right, with these state programs. Uh, yes, they're tied to a state, but essentially they're private lenders, right? Both the parent and the student are equally attached to this loan, kind of like equal responsibility. Oftentimes, the language or terminology they use is that they are co-borrowers. Um, uh, and, and again, each of the states are a little bit different in terms of, of their their rate, their repayment terms, et cetera, to get the, the lowest rate. And there's always like a caveat here with wherever you're borrowing, we're gaining something, we're giving something up. So if we want to get the lowest rate through the state, that's fine, but we got to start paying that loan back instantaneously. If we want to defer where we don't have to make any payments on the loan until six months after our kid graduates from college, that's fine too. Guess what? We're paying a higher rate. We are paying for that convenience, flexibility, whatever you want to call it. And like Peg, you know, made the good point to flag, interest is going to be accruing in the meantime, right? Um, but same thing, no prepayment penalties. Another, I think, noteworthy um, thing to mention about these state programs, there's not going to be, um, I don't want to speak for all of them, but generally speaking, there's no origination fees. So that matters too. Okay, so the private student loans, and this is what we think of as more our um, traditional, you know, student loans, right? The, the, the Sally Mays of the world and, and, and the college abs and the earnests, right? And, and this kind of whole uh, bucket of, of uh, options, okay, of which there are many. Um, I'm going to show you kind of uh, how we want you to leverage our platform to give you kind of a... a a marketplace where we're kind of a one-stop shop marketplace. But these are our loans that are really students' obligation first, okay? The co-signer, so generally parent, but it doesn't have to be. It could be grandparent, it could be aunt, whatever, um, is there just as you're kind of borrowing their credit score, right, as a safety net. This is the student's responsibility, okay? Now, the rate and the repayment terms that you get through the private student loan sector is entirely based on the application of that cosigner. Okay. Now, this year we've seen if you have a robust application, okay, some of these interest rates have been in the high fours, right? High fours, 5%. So that's what I'm talking about, you know, half or, or more than half of what the plus loan is, for example. Okay. So especially if you have a, a, a or you think you have a decent credit score, you at least want to apply through the private student loan sector. Again, I'm going to show you how in just a second here. Um, if you don't have a good credit score, how does that impact things here? Well, you're either going to be denied or you're going to be offered a higher rate, right? The bank's kind of saying, you know, we're going to give you a rate based on how confident we are 
that this is going to be paid back, right, uh, on time and all that. So, and again, you're not, there's no forgiveness programs in the private student loan sector. Um, there is no, you don't have that same flexibility, for lack of a better word, that you do with, with the plus loans, for example. Well, um, I don't know if you mentioned, but a, a lot of times the, the interest rates are variable. So that, that's really important. And oftentimes, thank you for, for, for uh, bringing that up, because a lot of times they're going to lead with um, uh, this rate that might be even extra attractive. And then the finer print say, oh, this is variable. If you want a fixed rate, here's what it is. And of course, that fixed rate is always higher. So great point. Right. Um, Peg, let me share my screen for a second, if I could, because I'm going to show you how for those of you, again, if you hadn't created your account yet, make sure that you do it. Um, but in the bottom of our platform, so again, to, to make sure you got the best award, see what we're projecting at the school of your choice, okay? Upload your award letter so we can evaluate, did you get the best award possible? But then what we're going to look at down here is this comparing private student loan rates, and I'll grab this link. This is like the biggest link of all time. But I'm putting this in the uh, chat here because this is going to bring you to this page, okay? And it's going to allow you to compare options. And there's a couple of things that that I want you to do if your family has to borrow and you're thinking that, that the private student loan section is at all a consideration. Number one, ap apply for a rate through College Ave, okay? Now, again, you're not committing to anything. You're just seeing what rate you're eligible for. On the whole, generally speaking, they've been the best, uh, most competitive rate among the private lenders this year. So start here. You're going to apply and see what rate the College Ave gives you. After that, you're going to go to Earnest. Earnest has a very unique program that, as a matter of fact, I don't think they do a good enough job uh, letting everybody know about. Well, they will match any other rate that you get in this private student loan marketplace. So if you go to College Ave and you get this, you know, 4.9 interest rate, and then you go to Earnest and it's 5.3, Earnest will match that. So start here because it's likely to be the uh, the least, um, the lowest rate, College Ave, and then you're going to go to Earnest, okay, uh, through this link here that I just put in the chat, and that's going to give you um, the the place that you're going to at least be able to get the lowest rate within the private student loan sector, right? And then you can compare that next to the plus loan next to the state options. But in terms of order of operations, that's what I'd recommend, right? Uh, go to our link here, go to College Ave, see what we get. And then you go to Earnest, lock in that lowest rate, and then compare to the state options, to the federal options. And, and Peg will talk uh, in a second here about the... Um, the, you know, our, all, our alternative options, but let me stop sharing here. All right. Okay. All right. So these are, as Matt said, we're kind of calling them the alternative, right? Options. Um, again, not recommending them that we would need to talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, but just throwing them out there. This one was huge several years ago. As we all know, Mortgage rates are pretty high right now. So um, taking out a home equity line of credit, they call it a HELOC, that's where you will apply to a bank to allow, they will say, hey, we're going to give you this pool of money that you can access, right? What's nice about it is you, you say, oh, we need 10,000 bucks for this semester. You pull that, then you're paying interest on that. It's not like a loan, a home equity loan, you get a big loan you're paying interest on it, a big chunk, and you don't even need it all. So HELOCs tend to be better. The issue is interest rates are high right now, right? If the Fed does tick down rates, you know, the economy seems to be slowing down, inflation is, is going down, we'll see. Um, the direct federal rates will go down for next year. Everything will reset based on what the Fed does. We don't have a crystal ball, so we don't know when everything's going to happen. So these strategies are a little dicey, but some people are sitting on a lot of home equity and they don't have other funds except for what's, you know, in their in their 401ks and such. So Cash out refi, that's a rough one because if you have a great interest rate, be really, really careful before you refinance. It's probably not a great idea. 
happy to chat with you about it, but I'll just say that probably not a great idea in that current, if you've got a great uh, interest rate right now. 401k loans, these make my skin crawl being a financial planner. You are literally robbing your retirement. Um, you even have to look at your employer plan and see if loans are even permissible. They might not be. These are loans, right? There's going to be a certain interest rate set by the plan. You're going to have to repay. It. God forbid you get let go or something. They downsize. You're going to have to pay that puppy back. So I would be really, really careful taking out a 401k loan. If this is your only option, um, it might be an indicator that the school is just not affordable. Um, intra-family loans. I've seen these work a few times. You know, uh, an uncle who didn't have any kids or grandma and grandpa, they want to give the money to their grandchild. But they're like, we want to help. And they can they can do up a promissory note and basically have a loan with an interest rate. Usually it's lower than the market. They're trying to help the child, but make them feel like they have skin in the game. So it can be a good option. It doesn't affect financial aid, which is nice. But when you're borrowing with friends and family, you know, that's that can always be an issue, right? So that's just something to keep in mind. But I've I've seen grandparents especially do this who don't want to just give Johnny a bunch of money. They want Johnny to appreciate it and work hard and and do his best. And then they might forgive it down the road. Life insurance. You might have heard of this. You might have insurance salesmen come to you. Um, if you have a lot of non-retirement money that's not in your 401k, 403b, that shows up on financial aid forms. So sometimes people will buy cash value life insurance. It goes off the grid for the for all the schools, unless there's a special question that asks about it. And then you can access it through different strategies. Um, you can take loans on it. You Again, you if you are going to consider something like this, don't do it in a financial aid silo, right? You really want to look at, do you need this insurance? What's going to happen when you actually need it? What does it cost to buy it? How do you fund it? You've got to get in the weeds and make sure you're talking to somebody that you trust that is a fiduciary that has your best interest, but it is a strategy that some people utilize for paying for, for college or part of the college cost for their kids. Okay, so in summary here, you wanna kick in, Matt? Yeah, totally. So this is, and again, I, tons of great question, guys. Just like we said at the top, we're not gonna be able to get to all of them. Um, please keep them coming. We'll continue to do the best that we can. And any ones that are, specific kind of financial guidance we just we were essentially not allowed to uh make firm recommendations there not that we could anyways we need more information but anyways uh, back to what we flagged at the top we want to help you start to figure out what is your family's criteria when you think about this this loan um or loans right and help you get to a place where you know it's the best option for your family these are the questions you need to start asking yourselves. Um, number one, how much does the rate of the loan matter? That's usually where everybody starts. I just want the lowest rate. Great. If that's truly all you care about, I gave you the steps to do that, right? Go into the link that, I'll, uh, uh, that, uh, that I shared, right? Apply for the college ab loan, then go apply for the earnest loan, and then compare that to uh, the state and, and federal options. And there's your answer, right? Simple as that, very straightforward, okay? Who should be on the loan for how long? For some families, the parents feel like, look it, we consider this our responsibility or, the, or X percentage of it our responsibility. And so we don't care if our kids are attached to the loan or not. Other families are the complete opposite side of the fence, right? Where look it, I need or I want the student to be formally attached to this loan, okay? Well, if you're in that camp, cross the PLUS loan off the table because they are not formally attached to it in any capacity. So we just have to move. We can remove that from our kind of set of options. Um, and, and again, maybe that's not a, a big factor. You don't really care, but that's something that you want to think about. How much do I value consumer protection, flexibility, set another way, insurance? So this kind of goes back to 
the plus loan where a lot of people hear, oh my God, you know, 9.08% plus a 4.25 origination fee. So effectively a 10% rate, okay? And a lot of people hear that and they dismiss it. But then we learn about the fact, well, okay, but they're the most flexible. And what if I'm somebody that has a very uh, unstable job and things could change on a dime? Um, geez, I might value working with a lender like that. I might knowingly pay a higher interest rate. Uh, but I also want to be able to quantify that. That's why we always say try to see what you would call, look at, investigate what rates you're going to get through these other options. Because then you can say, all right, if I'm going to get 8% through the private student loan sector, maybe it is worth it to pay a little bit more for the uh, for the plus loan, right? Because of all those kind of flexible benefits. But if I'm at 4.8%, it's not. I, I, I will take my chances with that big of a spread uh, in in the in the loan. So so that's why you really want to kind of start doing some some self-analysis and inventory to really think about, okay, do I care about whose name is on this loan, how flexible it is in repayment terms, et cetera, et cetera. And then obviously Peg talked about home equity briefly. Um, this used to be a major, you know, frequent recommendation two, three, four, or five years ago when rates were incredibly competitive. I don't know that I recommended it once last year. I have a feeling the same is going to be the case this year, but it's still on there, right? Because sometimes people, we had to help people get away from their philosophical differences um, about, you know, tapping into home equity, even if it made the most sense financially. Um, so th th that's what I'm talking about when I talk about, you know, um, establishing your borrowing criteria, because when we meet with folks one-on-one, -on -one, these are the conversations we're going to be having to help them get to where they want to get to, okay? And I, I can share my screen now, Peggy, because as part of these conversations, like I said, this is a really important decision. It's less sexy, but it's really important. If, so if you're having some of these um hesitations around when do I use the 529? How do I make sure that I still get the American Opportunity Tax Credit? Should I go the state program mm -hmm. versus private? Uh, I want someone a sanity check. Here's how much I'm borrowing. Tell me what you're, let me hear an unbiased third party here to weigh in on this, uh, even though we're at the finish line here. Book some time with us, okay? And here's how you do it. We, we got... Um, it, it, we're doing this 20% off tonight, right? So it's tonight and tonight only. We always re reward our live audiences. Okay, so within your MyCap platform, and you can put this in the uh, chat again, Peg, right? Go to mycap.collegepro.com. If you're on our free account, it's going to say upgrade here, okay? And when you hit that upgrade button, uh, you're going to choose software plus expert. And that will allow you to pick a time with any of us. You can say next available. You can go down our list of experts and, and choose who you think is the best fit for you. I mentioned, you know, our financial planners and CPAs on the team, um, uh, Jonathan West, Chuck Bates, uh, are Munley and Femia on the one hour link? Do you know, Peggy? Mm, no. Okay. no. Okay. But Jonathan West, Chuck Bates. Um, those are guys that are really well versed about what, do, how can I roll the up into the 529 and what are the tax? Um, Perry, Perry, Perry DeFontaine, yeah. Perry DeFontaine, he's, he's another uh, person on our team. So you're going to get answers uh, from anybody that you meet with around this stuff, but those are a couple guys that are certified um, and, and do, do that for a living as well. Um, but anybody that you meet with, we all have our PhDs on pros and cons of each of these loan options. And we are going to give you firm recommendations to say, if I were you, this is what I would do. Okay. In addition to that, this is something else I want you to take advantage of this uh, 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 during this hour. We want to look at your offer, right? Because we can usually gut check right away. We'll use the software to do it too, but we can usually look at your family and go, you should have got a better deal from Boston College. You know, you should have get a better deal from Oberlin. Okay. If you didn't appeal at Oberlin, I'm going to tell you, you should be appealing at Oberlin, right? They always give more money. Um, so, uh, you know, again, take advantage of that. Don't overthink this one. It's a big decision. Okay. You're going to get ROI on that. Um, and use that. Did you put the coupon on code in there, Peggy? It's um, no, I'll do it right now. Okay. So, so when you go to upgrade, put, um, or, or if you already have on our premium version of our software, it'll say, just talk to an expert, right? You'll click this button and, and go see, 
you know, who you want to meet with. You can go to next available or choose somebody, whatever. Um, but use the coupon code alone 20 and you'll get 20% off. That's just tonight. So that's and there's a, a little blue area. It says apply coupon or something like that. A lot of people write into us. I couldn't find it. I paid full price. Like look for it. it's right there and you click it and, and then hit apply and your 20% will come right off as, as you're booking it. So. Yeah. So take advantage of that guys. It's a big decision. You can use it anytime. So even if you're still waiting there for financial aid award, whatever, um, but otherwise, we we would recommend that you get rolling on that. If you're somebody that goes, look, at, I'm all over it, or I'm a DIYer, I don't need to meet with anybody, no problem. Follow all the steps that I laid out for you here. I'm going to put it in the chat again. Go to this link, either within your MyCap account or directly here. Apply through College Ave. See what that rate comes back at. Go to Earnest, and then compare that to the state options that you're eligible for. And then the um, uh, the the federal plus loan, right? If if again, if you are the the DIYer, you know who you are. Even if you are a DIYer, it's a good thing to have somebody gut check, um, in my opinion. So, yeah, but uh, but 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 look, hopefully you guys have had a chance to celebrate what a massive accomplishment this is. And I I, I think this is a could be a frustrating time, a, a, another pain point for parents that all all like. How did I not save more? You know, I, I you're almost like embarrassed, but it, we're doing that. We're all doing the best we can with what we have to work with. Right. And, uh, and, and something I'll say all the time, it's like, well, maybe you would have saved more, but you wouldn't have been as good a parent. Right. You would have, I, I don't know, you would have missed these games and not been there for these moments and all this. And that's, uh, we are where we are. Uh, we're trying to help you make the best decisions that are in front of us. Um, so that's kind of my parting words, Peggy. I don't know. Wow, if you're like... Matt's getting really, he's getting into borderline emotional. I'm going to get a couple of tears in my eyes here. Hey, don't get me going, <laughs> Peggy. You know that. Don't get me going. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, you know, look, we, Matt did an excellent job of each type and the pluses and minuses, and it's going to depend on your family. So I tell people all the time, like, have your different options. I know it's work. I know it's work to apply to them. Somebody just said, oh, can they do a soft ping on me? No. They want to look in. Before they're going to give you an interest rate, they need to know your stuff, right? Wow. Well, hold on a second. You know what? There's one. Let me go look at it with that question. There is one soft ping option or whatever they call them, right? Uh, give me a second because I have... I mean, uh, hopefully yes. they'll stand by it, though, because if they saw yeah. the thing and then later they say, well, no, it's actually this. Yeah, I'm not I'm not representing any lender here. Yeah, but, we're not we're not uh, getting any kickbacks from the lenders. So, <laughs> OK, but so uh so is the the soft check or whatever. So, yeah, ultimately, um, they're going to need to know your stuff. But if this, you know, the soft check should lead to the same information that when they get in the weeds. But again, I've never loaned money. I, you know, it's not my background. But, you, you know, you got to know your different options before you can make a decision. The Parent Plus loan is very clear. It's this, it's this origination fee. But the other but, stuff, you kind of got to, you got to, got to look at it, right? See what yeah. your options are before you can make a firm a firm decision. So, yeah. And two last questions before we cut out or comment: uh, Is it better to borrow by semester or the year? Generally speaking, you borrow for the whole year, right? And the lender will disperse it automatically, half for the fall semester, half for the spring semester, and obviously, if it's trimesters, a third, a third, a third. Uh, and then we had another. Um, uh, somebody asked me if we got deleted. I liked it. It said, I need a service that can match me up with a rich uncle to adopt me. We do offer that. that. <laughs> we do offer that. It's a, it's a higher tier package. Uh, you can write in to support at College Aid Pro. It gets pretty pricey. Yeah, it's pricey. It's pricey. <laughs> so. um, all right, Peggy. Great job as always. Um, hopefully everybody learned a little bit. And uh, yeah, happy to keep helping you. All right, guys. Have a great night.